Hello everybody and welcome back to our full exploration of Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Let's have a look what's over here. down here music's gone really dramatic Mrs. Graves? I can hardly look her in the eyes. Are you sure we've got enough money? Yeah. Once we're in France, we can start working anyway. My dad will bloody skin you. We'll be in Spain <laughs> and married by the time your dad knows we've gone. <laughs> Young love. I'm gonna go back this way to where we were before, just so we don't miss anything else. Thunderstorms are really relaxing to listen to. If a car left open, sometimes they leave a bit of law out. Not always, though. Di, whatever's wrong, you look terrible. This is Graves. Sean's baby Dylan's. You all right? He's fine. Di, come on. It's okay. Let's get you a cup of tea. Mrs. Graves, I need to tell you. Leave it, Di. You try and get out of the valley, all the roads are shut down. I know, I was driving really fast, but the other car was on the wrong side of the road, and oh God, I think Di, he's... for fuck's sake, leave it. It's all right. Hey, you're all right. Sean's all right, baby Dylan's all right. That is what matters. Everyone's all right. <laughs> but... No. Now, I need your help. 
Some of the children, they're getting quite frightened. So Rachel and I, we decided to push forward the show, keep them occupied. You said the other night that you play piano. Can you help with that? Yes, yes, I suppose so, but Mr. Graves, Rob... Can look after himself. He's a big boy now. Don't worry. Just head to the hall and find Rachel. She'll tell you what needs practicing. OK, thank you, Mrs. Graves. Yeah, Sean. Go and find Reese, please, see if he needs some help. Yeah, of course. Go on. Oh, Robert. She knows. They were driving really quick and he was drunk and on the wrong side of the road. She hasn't got time to mourn though, as she ought to grieve with what's happening. Well, we can go this way. Brilliant. Let's see if we can get any more law from these cabins. Is she going crazy? Right, I'm gonna go to the beach in a minute. I wanna explore this entire little area first. Can't break into that one. No, it's not really breaking in. No one really owns them now, do they? Might as well try the locks, you never know. One of them might be open. People out on the water when it when they died, or they just floated off because of the weather. You don't think she's gone to look for Mr. Graves, do you? I think Lizzie knows Robert will turn up when he's sober. It'll be all right. Do you want me to go and look for her? No, it's okay. Come on, I promised the kids another shot at the last number, then I promised everyone a cup of tea. You're very like her, you know. Like Lizzie. Me? No, I'm not. First chance I get, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, the little love story. Was that before or after they got together? Might have been before when they were just friends, maybe. We'll figure that out more when we actually piece the characters together, when we do the chapter part of our story. Probably going to do that after this one, and then we'll do the story in order. She wouldn't do that. Would she? What about Dylan? She's not exactly jumped at the chance of looking after him, is she? She just left you to it. She's not coming back. I let her go. She's always thinking of everyone else. There must be something important she needs to do. It looks like you're in charge now. 
So I guess this means we're not leaving, are we? Spain can wait. Listen, you get back in there, and you make this the best bloody Peter Pan ever performed in England. And I'm gonna go and get your mum and dad. Promise me you'll come back. I promise. But he doesn't come back. That's what someone was telling her, wasn't it? It's instant. So what happened to him? Let's go over here before we get back over there and see if there's, I think there's a couple of things we've missed. Hello, Catherine. It's Kate. Elizabeth? Lizzie. I've heard a lot about you. It's good, you know, you and Emma, it's not difficult or anything. Should it be? I'm sorry? You said it wasn't difficult. I don't see why it would be difficult. You and Stephen were together a long time ago. He moved away. It certainly isn't difficult for me. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you or... No, I'm not offended. Listen, Elizabeth... But I... Lizzie, please. <laughs> Lizzie. Right. You seem like an okay type of person. And I'm not trying to be rude, I promise. But let's try and be realistic here, huh? Let's, um, try and do our best. It's a British thing, right? Yeah, yeah, I suppose it is. We'll do our best, then. Bit awkward. That was Kate messing with the power. Where are you taking us, Lizzie? I do want to go back that way, but there's some up there as well I want to check out. I'll check these cabins out and I want to go back up there. Oh, holiday makers to the main hall. Yeah, not yet. Not for me. No, not yet. I have some things to do before I go to any main hall. Oh, look, the back of the mimbles over there. See if there's any other small things that we might have missed before. Ah, another path that way. Can't go through there though. Okay, so the main hall is the last place we have to go. But I'm not going to go there just yet because I want to check out everything else first. Nice little drinking area. Little hidey area. No, I'm not going to the main hall just yet. We are still looking for other bits of lore. We will go to the main hall in a bit. Because we want to continue this part of the story. I haven't finished yet. There's still some places for me to go. Have a look around at. Ah, radio. All five towers are now operating together, and I've got the reception up to the red zone, but it's not enough. I'm going to try and route the signal through Tower 6 to create a singular point of reception and re-coordinate the optical array, which should, in theory, focus a signal spike on the point of origin. If I conceptualize this origin point as a seventh tower, then it makes a kind of sense. Kind of. I think we're moving so far beyond everything I understand about physics. 
Anyway, it's gotta be worth a shot. She's getting stressed. She's her and uh, Stephen kind of caused the end of mankind, didn't they? Okay, yes, it is that way then. We've seen everything else that way, following back round. Oh, holiday makers to the main hall. Tell the trap then. Oh, someone was in here, and they got the they got the uh, nosebleed. Which everyone seems to keep getting. The mine hole's up there. Okay, so I've got this bit and I've got this bit. Let's have a look around here. I found another dead bird over at the swimming pool. That's the fourth one this morning. Did you fish it out? Yeah. Did you get a chance to think about that pay rise? Oh, I'm sorry, Reese. I've been a little bit busy. Oh, Rachel. Sorry I'm late, Mrs. Graves. I was packing away the tennis things. Did you check Mr. Cole Shelley again like I asked you to? He's not back yet. I haven't seen him either. Do you think he went into town? Maybe. Yeah, something oh, like that. Oh, the dentists were booked in for a 4.30 tennis session, but they didn't show up. So I went to their chalet. You know, they always take the one near the campfire, but they weren't there either. I think maybe they went into the village for a hoover bag and might have given Mr. Cole a lift. A hoover bag? Why on earth would they do that? Well, I think maybe Mrs. Denton was hoovering and the bag broke so they had to get another one. Because there's this dust all over this chalet. Oh, okay. We we all know what that means, don't we, guys? The light has taken them. Oh, dear. Before I head over there, I want to make sure I definitely get everything from behind this little bit. There's a path here. Now I've got a little bit of it. I think have we got everything now? Yeah, we have, haven't we? Yeah, because that leads around there. That leads around to that little bit of law which we found earlier. Okay, so let's head towards the swimming pool. Your hip giving you grief today always gives me grief, and I managed for the last ten years, so you're a little late for the knight in shining armor routine. Suit yourself, I'm only trying to help. God damn it, Stephen! I'm not some useless sappy girl that you can just string along forever. Look around you. I made all of this. I built it on my own when everyone else had written me off as some poor little cripple. You know that's not how I see you. Well, you weren't there, were you? No. You'd given up on me long before the accident. What do you want from me, Lizzie? I love you. I'll do anything. Anything except her, okay? I thought not. I love you too, but sometimes I think you just say what you think everyone else wants to hear. And that's why he's a bit of a flawed hero in this story, because... As much as he tries to do the right thing, he kind of just wants to please everybody, even though sometimes he's not being truthful. St I still don't agree with the fact he didn't give anybody the opportunity to save themselves. He could have told them he was going to order the attack, could at least given someone a chance. The only person he gave a damn about was Lizzie. And if it was about, if it was about the risk of the source of the light killing people and not wanting to spread, then he wouldn't even allow Lizzie to escape. But he even ga he gave Lizzie the chance. 
and condemned everybody else to death. And Lizzie really should sh have shared the same fight as everybody else in that. If you can't be saved anyway, what's the point in trying to escape? If, on the other hand, there was a chance for people to escape, Stephen should have given everybody the chance to get out while they can. And then have the bombs be dropped to kill anybody. There's another one there. To kill the rest of the light off. That would have made him more of a hero in my eyes. Not as flawed as he is at the moment. Have I missed anything over here? Just want to make absolutely certain before we continue. Okay, this is quite far. How far can I go? Can I go in the water? No, I can't go in the water. Right, okay, let's carry on. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make absolutely certain before we get to the final scene. We're coming very slowly, but we are coming there. Okay, yeah, there's no more lore apart from the last bit. So Lizzie's not here anymore. She's gone off. We know that Stephen gave her that final message to leave, and he was going to he's going to meet her at the train station. They could escape through the tunnels. So this piece here will be the end of Lizzie's story in the camp. It's not actually going to be the end of her story just yet because we know she's left the camp. But we will get to see what happens to Lizzie. And we might even get to see other parts of her story still. Like we're still seeing bits of Jeremy and Frank. I haven't seen any of Wendy for a bit. Oh, this is not like this. It's a nice little area. I'm going to the main hall. Oh, no way. Puppies. Here we are, the main hall. Sleeping baby, darling child, clouds and starlight, 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 when you wake, you will be mine, starlight, sleep and love, sleeping baby, shadow dust, clouds and starlight, Numbered starlight. When we're called to go, we must into starlight, sleep, and love. See asleep. You're a kid. 
I'll be all right. You should get some sleep, Charlie. You look exhausted. light takes them before the gas can take hold. Yep, there is Lizzie, she carries onwards now. Now we will see Lizzie again, but not just yet. But for now, we are going to be joining somebody else. Someone we've seen a lot of. Stevens is more erratic. There's data coming through faster than I can encode it. I've already lost two processors. They keep burning out. Please, I love you. You need to get out of there. It's not safe. I need you, Stephen. I need you here. I can open the gate manually. I can let you in. It's too dangerous. You don't understand what's happening No, here. you don't understand. We can solve this. We can find a way. I just need more power. I need to amplify the signal, and I can't do it on my own. You saw the opportunity. You ran the numbers, remember? We're responsible for all this. You and me. <laughs> it's not just you and me anymore, though, is it? Jesus, Kate, you're trying to talk to it, aren't you? Kate, you can't. Stephen, I have to. She's lost the plot. She's absolutely lost the plot. Look at the light though in the sky. Really eerie pinky sky. It's completely dead, it won't start. It's only a short walk to the camp. I think we should split up. You go and fetch Rachel. I'll go back to the village and find Evie. I don't think we should split up. I don't want to either, Charlie, but we've got to. 
I'll meet you back at my house later on, okay? We can talk properly then. Why won't you tell me what happened? No, no, actually, you should stay at the camp tonight. Come and find me in the morning. Bring Rachel back. She's gonna need her mother. Meg. Just take care of her. Meg! What is it, Charlie? Nothing. Just be careful, that's all. I will, I promise. You as well. I'll see you later on. People's car started breaking down. That was the light though, the light affected quite a few things. This phone. Where are you? Where is it, man? But why on earth are you there? Why aren't you calling from home? It's hard to explain. I'm having to move around to follow it. When it finds a suitable host, it begins to amplify. Sorry, I'm not making much sense. They're talking about flu and a quarantine on the radio, but this... I know you're not that kind of doctor, but it all just sounds really weird. We don't know exactly what it is yet, but it's got something to do with the other night. Stephen, your face, the mark, do you think you're infected? It's not a disease, Lizzie. It's something else. There's something Kate said about patterns. I can't grasp it clearly yet. Okay, come over. Have some lunch. We can talk properly. Have you spoken with Kate? Well, she's locked herself in the observatory. She's buried in the data. But it's already out here in the world. I need to see how it adapts. How what adapts? Stephen, try to explain. Time's up. Lizzie, listen. Be ready. I need to go. It's moving again. I'll call you later. Do you think she'll like it? It's in an awful state, Stephen. I don't It'll think so. It'll be an adventure. It'll mean putting down roots here, maybe a family. Are you sure she wants children? What, to stay here? It's not her place, you know. Don't start that again, please. I mean, she's ambitious, love, and she's, well, older. She's not going to want to stay cooped up at home looking after the kids. Is that how you felt about me? Oh, stop it, Stephen. That's not what I meant, and you know it. I'm just saying you should make a choice. If it's a family you want, well, you know how much Lizzie wants a family. Jesus, Mum, I didn't come here for marriage guidance. I just asked what you thought about a fucking house. Stephen Appleton language. Sorry, it's just that you have to understand. Kate is the most brilliant, extraordinary, wonderful person I've ever known. She's, she's like no one else. The way she looks at things. It's like she has whole worlds inside her head. I don't think you or anyone really understands that. I don't think Stephen really understands her. Oh, is that butterfly inside the house then? That's cool. So this is the house he wants to buy. So 
So this would have been the house he would have brought with her. There's a shed up there. I'm going to see if I can open it. Maybe we can find another radio. No, okay, that's blocked off. Oh, there's a radio in the bus stop. Okay, let's see what she has to say now. Physical changes are evident. Although the butterfly burn is now faded, I can clearly see the change in my pores up close. As I record these words, I can feel myself hearing them as if for the first time, as if I'm both speaker and listener simultaneously. I am a scientist. I can only deal with the evidence I have. And this points in one simple direction. It's not in the observatory. It's in me. So she's figured out the light inside us. Hasn't killed her yet though. There's another house over there for us to check out. And another payphone. Okay, we can't go in there. We can't get to that house for some reason. Kate, Kate, can you hear me? Listen, I'm trying to make things right. I've isolated myself. I'm in the old bunker at the substation. Just keep this band clear. If it's still alive, I'll try and check in every hour. Kate, I've convinced them to use the gas. I, I didn't know how else to stop it. I couldn't save them. Kate, it's in us, too. I've made arrangements for myself after the strike, after I finish the job. You need to think of that too. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry about it all. Steven's taking it to the extreme to try and get rid of it. Butterflies. Birds haven't returned though, have they? Well, I still can't get in that way either. There's a phone in here somewhere. He's upstairs, maybe. It's in here. Okay, there's the phone. No phones, you know the protocol. That doesn't matter now. It's figured out how to circumvent the telecommunications blackout. What? I didn't think it could. Kate understood. She saw how adaptable it was. How smart. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're talking about it like it's alive. You have to assume that everyone here is infected. We can't know we that. Are infected it's killed all the birds and now it's in us it's trying to leave the valley any way it can the quarantine is not enough you've got to remove the carriers you've got to cut off its energy source its food i've already told you Stephen, i'm not going to water you an have to. now it knows we're onto it it's going to keep on spreading as fast as it can the quarantine and blackout will hold it in check they've cut all of the phones out of the valley so it's only you communicating Aren't out you now. listening it's figured out ways around it. Radio waves, something. 
All of the lines are cut, but the phones are working anyway. You've done all the right things, but it's not enough. You've got to stop it before it adapts again. Stephen, my, my family, my, my wife and kids. You know perfectly well what you've got to do. I can't do it. Don't ask me to do it. You're asking me to sign their death warrant, my own family. Damn it, don't you think I'm aware of that? I'll still be here when you drop the fucking stuff. Don't you lecture me about sacrifice, you spineless little shit. If you're so full of ideas, you come here and try dealing with it. Tell them the time when we had a choice is over. Tell them to do it. You've got to do it now. Clive had to sacrifice his own family. The biggest question I'd like to like answered with this is, did it work? Did dropping the bombs actually work? Did it stop this creature from going elsewhere, from it spreading, from it entering other people's homes and lives and killing them? Or were they successful? Did they actually stop it here? It's the only question I really have. Did they actually manage to stop it? One of the good things about this game that makes it a tiny little bit more realistic is the fact that we do have scientists that are continuously trying to communicate with otherworldly beings, things that they don't understand. And it could happen. You never know, we could end up communicating with something that's beyond our understanding and it could be the death of us. Sometimes it's better to not really communicate with what we don't understand. Leave it alone. Okay, this is the second pub in this village. <laughs> you look well. I don't, <laughs> but thank you. You do. How are you settling in? Nothing changes around here. I mean, it's great to be back. It still feels like home, I suppose. In a funny kind of way. It's been a long time, Stephen. Last time you saw me, I could still walk properly. You look pretty good to me. Stop it. For what it's worth, I'm sorry about how things worked out. Or didn't. Or didn't, right. Do you think you made a mistake leaving? My mum tells me it's never too late to change things. To put things right. Funny. It's just what she said to me the other day. I have been wondering what she <laughs> meant by that. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, maybe I should go. Why? Stephen, we're both married. I don't think this is a good idea. What isn't? 
We're just two old friends having a drink, that's all. Korean pint, only two pound. That wouldn't even get you a pint nowadays. So that's when they finally met up again. Well, we saw at like, the very beginning that Wendy was trying to encourage Lizzie to go for it. Even though she knew her son was married and she shouldn't have been encouraging it, but she did. We have two paths here. One down there and one up there. I'm going to actually check by this car first, just in case there's a radio or anything. No, nothing. I'm going to head through that little... ...little gap there. Hmm. Where are we on the map? Okay, so... There might be something through here. is not open yet because we're not ready to go there. I'm going to head back the other way in a sec. I'm just exploring everything I can find right now. What is this leading us to? Okay. The back of there. I'm going to follow the road back that way. I don't want to miss anything. Okay, that's where we've got to head to, that farm. Okay, I've got to get back to the houses and the pub. Jesus, man, what do you dent your face? It's nothing. You collecting feed? Looks like the supplies have been coming in. Huh? Again? This phone's a little strange. I can't pinpoint the logic of transmission. You what? What are you doing with that paint? Means the EMC are actually moving at the proper speed. Listen, Frank. Have you uh, heard anything on the radio about a flu outbreak? Doesn't seem much like flu to me. They're shutting down access to the valley to try and isolate it. No. There's something about the phones. I can't put my finger on it quite yet. What are you talking about? Hey, I'm still talking to you. Where are you going? This is before he's completely lost the plot and he's running around. This is just after the incident. Radio. This is Catherine Collins, recording for posterity. It's all over. I don't know how long I've got. Whatever he did, whatever the planes were carrying, it's burning my lungs. Probably some kind of nerve agent. I suspect it's only exposure to the pattern that has kept me alive this long. I'm making my way to Tower 6. I'm going to fuse the signals from the optical array. Just Make it. 
that's when he basically just killed everybody in the end. Okay, I've got to whip my way around here anyway, so let's get back to those houses. I'm going to get to the pub. There's a train station there. I'm not going to there yet. We'll come back that way. We are coming to the end of this video anyway. We have so many things to explore in the last video. Got a couple of places I can explore before then. Okay, yeah, we can do the pub last. We could, before we finish this video, and then we've got the rest of that bit and Kate's part of the story. See her point of the story, see what she actually thinks about all this. Road closed. I've never seen it. They do, though. You're overreacting. Stephen, they stare at me. <laughs> Yesterday, I went into the village, and this old woman just stopped in the middle of the street and stared at me like I had two heads. Oh, don't be so melodramatic. <laughs> I'm like a walking freak show. Oh, this place. It's so insular. I just don't understand how you grew up here. Well, I was very different then. And they're not so bad, really. That's easy for you to say. Just give it a bloody chance, Kate. This was the deal. A year here, and we could be in with a real shot at Lucia. Stephen! Oh, Christ, it's Lantham. Stephen Appleton, I thought it was you. What's all this about a young wife? Oh, um, hello. Two heads, Stephen. Hi, I'm Kate. He has a very short temper, doesn't he, Stephen? You're going to say goodbye to another character here, though, guys. Stephen, I don't know if you'll ever listen to this. Uh, maybe you've decided to stay with Kate, and I, I can't blame you for that. But I can't wait for you either. I've got to think about the baby. And, well, <laughs> I should have left a long time ago. I've run out of excuses for not leaving now. But I do love you, Stephen. And I hope you find peace one way or another. Oh, there's planes coming. Oh dear. The light, the light took her in the bed before the gas could. That is the end of Izzy's story in this. Right. I am going to finish this video here. In the next one will also be our final one. 
we'll find out what happens with Stephen and then we'll go and join Kate and see her side of the story. Once all that is done, I will probably have a bit of a break before we continue with the next part of the project, what I'm doing, and that is focusing on each character and going through their story. So some people's stories will be shorter than others. Like Stephen and Kate, their stories are probably going to be the longest, Sam and Lizzie. But we've met people like Reese and Rachel, the Doctor. So their stories will be told as well. Now they won't be as long as everybody else's story. But we'll see different characters appear in each of their stories. And hopefully we'll get to be able to have a clearer, a clearer view on what really happened with them and how they ended up in the situation they ended up in. What really happened between Reese and Rachel? Because we know somewhere that Reese didn't come back after he left Rachel. He went to look for the parents but never came back. Maybe we'll find out in the next chapter to this. Anyway guys, thank you all for watching and until next time, take care.